This guy is often credited as being the father of editing, but his discovery was originally an accident. One day, while recording people walking on the streets of Paris, his camera jammed for just a moment, which isn't really surprising because he had made the camera himself. When he came to play the film later, he noticed the people in the street seemed to jump position suddenly. They had of course continued walking while his camera was jammed for a second. Thus, editing was born. The first ever edit was in fact an accidental jump cut. Armed with this knowledge, and with the ability to replicate that film jam in modern editing software, we can dream up some pretty cool and simple effects. The key to this technique is not to move the camera in between takes. As long as you do that, the world is your oyster. Aside from cheap magic tricks, you could use this technique to illustrate things in your video. It's a great way to make things appear, change, disappear, and even create more visual interest in the video. Okay, so before we get a hold on how we can use the jump cut to do some cool effects, let's remind ourselves how we can create a basic jump cut in some footage. So let's use this clip to start with. And in HitFilm Express, in the trimmer window here, you can actually select how much of the clip you want to use before you bring it onto the timeline. So you bring this little playhead to the place you want to start, and then you press I for in. And now you drag it across to the point you want the clip to stop on the timeline, which is about there. You can press O for out, and those are called in and out points. And now if you click and drag that image down onto the timeline, it just brings that portion in gray down onto the timeline. I'm going to select yes to conform the sequence settings to match the clip, and now bring that to the beginning of the timeline. Okay, so let's zoom in a little bit to get a closer look. And to make a jump cut, we just need to remove some material from the middle of the clip. So I'm going to move the playhead to the point that I want to make my first cut, select the slice tool over here or with the key C, make a cut by clicking, and then move the playhead to the point I want to make my second cut. And then the stuff in between we're going to delete. So I want to continue watching at here. So I'm going to cut there. And now with the arrow tool, select the stuff in the middle and press delete. Now I can move this clip up against the first, play through the cut. And we've got a pretty good jump cut. If you're having playback issues, go up here and change the resolution to half and then let's play through again. Well, you get the idea. We've made a basic jump cut. Okay, so let's see how we can apply a jump cut to make an effect. So let's go to the jumping example. I'm going to choose the bit just before I start jumping. I'm gonna press I for in, and you'll see here how I did it. I just jumped once, changed position, and then jump twice, I'm going to press O for out. And what's really key here is that I didn't move the camera in between doing those two jumps, which of course is easy if you do it in one clip, but you can stop and start recording, but the key thing is if you stop recording, leave the camera where it is until you're finished. Okay, so we'll bring this down onto the timeline, and we'll do the same thing. What we're going to do is we're going to make our first cut at the height of that first jump, right at the midpoint, which is about there. So C for the slice tool, and then move the playhead to the midpoint of the second jump. And that's the other thing that will really sell these effects, is if you cut on the same action. So whatever's changed in your scene, in this scene we've changed position, as long as you do the same action at both ends of it, you've got something to cut to and you can really help sell the effect. So I'm going to make another cut here with the slice tool and then with the arrow tool I'm going to delete the stuff in the middle. Again I'm going to move this part up to the first, whoops, that part up to the first and now if we play through, it's like I'm teleporting to the side a little bit. Okay, so let's try another example. Let's try that cool fading in and out that I had in front of the house. So I'm gonna select here, I'm gonna press in, or I for in, and now I'm going to select all of this stuff right until I'm outside the house again. I'm gonna press O for out, bring that onto the timeline. Now with this example, what we're going to do 
is we're going to split it up into three clips and cut out a load of stuff from the middle. So I want to keep me standing in front of the door and then I'm going to cut all the stuff where I'm moving around. So use the slice tool to make a cut there and then I'm going to find the point at which the doors close behind me which is about there, make another cut and I'm going to delete all that stuff. Now I'm going to move the clip over and we want to keep uh, this footage of the door closed without me in front of it and we'll call this a blank slate and it's useful for applying different types of effect. So I'm going to use the slice tool again to make a cut there and again I'm going to get rid of all the stuff where I'm coming back out. So I'm in front of the door again, about there, cut the clip and then select all that stuff where I'm moving and get rid of it. Move this clip up against that one. And now if we play through, we've got a good set of jump cuts. I kind of appear and disappear, but we can accentuate that by moving these clips up onto the second video track. Now if we zoom in to get a closer look, we can do one of several things. We can add some keyframes with the control key on a PC or a command on a Mac add one, two. We just want to make sure that that first keyframe that we make stays at 100% opacity. So we go to controls with the clip selected in the timeline, go to transform opacity, and we just make sure that's 100%. And bring that to where the 07 clip starts. And then the second keyframe we bring down to zero. So across this amount of time, we are ramping down the opacity of this clip. Now, if we play through, kind of disappear, I kind of just fade out. And that's where this blank slate clip in the middle, this clip of just the house with the door closed is really useful because we've got something to fade to. We can do a similar thing on the other side of the transition. Again, we add two keyframes to the opacity line along the middle of this clip. We can change the opacity wholesale just by clicking and dragging but in order to have that change over time, we need to am animate it with keyframes. So again, command on a Mac, control on a PC, click, click. We just want to make sure that one of them, the outgoing keyframe is at 100%. And at the point where the blank slate clip, the clip of just the house with, without me in front of it, ends, we'll have the opacity of the 07 clip reach 100%. And then we'll bring this one down to zero and have the 07 clip start at zero. And now if we play through that section, there, and I kind of appear out of nowhere. So if we zoom out a little bit, we can take a look at both in one go. Let's try and reduce the resolution of the viewer here just to increase the playback quality. Well, you get the idea, I'm kind of fading in and out. My computer's struggling to play every frame at the moment, but. And if we just put the playhead in the middle of those effects, you can see the kind of idea that we're going for. Okay, let's move on to the final example, which is the change of pants. So I think that was in here somewhere, or perhaps, it was, oh yeah, it was at the end of this one. So here I've got the jeans in hand. I'm going to press I for in, and then I'm going to get that first shake, press O for out, bring that onto the timeline. And then what I had to do was, if we scrub to the end of this clip, you'll see that I come and turn off the camera, but critically, I left the camera in place. I didn't move it. And that's key to getting these effects to work. So I turned off the camera, but I kept it in position while I went and changed my trousers. And then I came back in this clip, and you can see I've started recording, but I've kept the camera in place. And then I get back in the same position with the other set of trousers in my hand, and I do exactly the same motion. Like we've seen in each example, you have to put the same action on the end of the change in the scene. So I'm going to use um, this part, I'm gonna press I, in, I'm going to get
get two of those shakes. I'm going to press O for out. And in fact, I'm going to trim that even more. I don't need that first one. I just need the second one. So I'm going to press I to shorten that even more. Bring that onto the timeline. And the process is exactly the same, even though we're dealing with two different clips now. What we're going to do is we're going to cut on the action again. So I'm going to choose the point at which there's most movement on screen. Okay, so we've cut this clip on the action and we've deleted the second half. Let's bring up this clip and now we're going to cut on the same action but with the other trousers. So you can see they make a similar shape on screen, so I'm going to cut about there. Use the slice tool and now I'm going to cut off or delete that first half, first section. And Now if I select that second half and butt them up against each other and now when we play through I've miraculously changed pants in an instant. By cutting on the action we're really drawing our audience's attention towards the center of the screen where all the action is taking place and where it's most dynamic. By making the cut here we hopefully distract them from the other cues on screen which might tell them that this is a jump cut. The shadows on the wall move a little bit over the cut and also there's some wind blowing through the plants there so they also jump a little bit during the cut. But by cutting on the action we can distract our audience from that. It's not like we're trying to fool them. I think it's safe to say that they can guess what's going on here but it's just another way to engage them with your video and entertain them a little bit.